Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Math 221. Today we're going to talk about section 9.7, Pascal's formula, and the binomial theorem. So today we're going to talk more about the quantity that we defined last time, which is n choose r. Remember that this is the number of possible size r subsets from a set of size n. So there are, are a lot of applications for this quantity in choose r, and likewise there are a lot of theorems about its values. Um, you know it has that uh, formula, this one, um, n factorial over r factorial n minus r factorial, and you can make a lot of different uh, equations using that formula. So one useful application of n choose r is to the expansion and simplification of polynomials, and that is via the binomial theorem. So today we're going to look at some different theorems related to this quantity, and then we're going to build up to the binomial theorem. Okay, so let's just do an example first to show you the kinds of formulas that you can make um, for n choose r with different values in there for n and for r. Um, so here, justify the equations in 6 through 9, either by deriving them from the formulas in example 9.7.1 or by a direct computation from theorem uh, 9.5.1. So this theorem right here, this is just the theorem that tells you um, how to calculate n choose r. That's n choose r equals uh, n factorial divided by r factorial and then n minus r factorial. And you can just use this uh, to do all these examples and homework problems. So let's do this one. So n plus 3, choose n plus 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to plug into the formula for the choose um, formula. OK, so in place of n, I've got n plus 3. So this is going to be n plus 3 on the top factorial. OK, and then in place of r, I've got n plus 1. So this is going to be n plus 1 factorial. And then over here is n minus r. So you do the thing on the top minus the thing on the bottom. So this is going to be n plus 3 minus, and then make sure you use parentheses here so it cancels correctly. OK, so you just always have the thing on the top factorial and then the thing on the bottom factorial and then top minus bottom factorial there as well. OK, and now we just need to simplify this a little bit. So let me do the subtraction part first. OK, so this uh, n plus 3 minus n plus 1 is just going to be uh, 2 factorial. So I don't really need the parentheses there anymore. Now you do want to be careful when you're using parentheses with these factorials. You always put parentheses around the thing um, that is before the factorial if there's any pluses or multiplications or anything in it, um, if it's not just a single number. Uh, because for example, like n plus 3 factorial, that is really, really different from um, n plus 3 in parentheses factorial. Right? Completely different. Okay. So anyway, let's go ahead and keep simplifying this. So what I want to do is try to simplify um, the factorials to get some cancellation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start writing out n plus 3 factorial. So the first factor is n plus 3, and then you just go down by 1, right? So then the next one will be n plus 2, so that's subtracting 1. And then the next one will be n plus 1. And then of course I would have n, and then n minus 1, and n minus 2, and dot dot dot, all the way down through um, uh, 3, 2, 1. I'll just go ahead and write some of them out so you can see what's happening here. You don't have to do this many if you don't want to. OK, and then all the way down to 3, 2, 1. And then on the bottom, I'm going to have, uh, let me write the 2 factorial part first. OK, and then I'll write the n plus 1 factorial. So this will be n plus 1, and then n, and then n minus 1, and then n minus 2. And just keep going down by 1 every time. And then all the way down to uh, 3, 2, 1. OK, so what's going to happen here is a bunch of these are going to cancel out. Ba -doing, ba -doing. And then you get n plus 3 times n plus 2, and then the 2 factorial part. And then, of course, 2 factorial is just 2. 2 times 1, which is 2. So this is going to be n plus 3 times n plus 2 over 2. And you see that is actually the same as the right-hand side up there. Um, I guess I didn't really mention this part right here, but this is just kind of to prevent you from like plugging in a negative number to the factorial. There is actually a definition for factorials when you have negative numbers in there, or even when you have like 2.5 or 3.5 like decimals in there, um, but that's like beyond the scope of this class. So we're just sticking with putting numbers um, that are either zero or positive integers into the um, factorials. Okay, let's just do one more example. Uh, so this one is k minus r, choose k minus r. Now, if you think about this for a second, it makes sense that it should be 1, because, for example, no matter what you put in the top and bottom, if it's the same, for example, if I do 3 choose 3, that's the number of subsets of size 3 from a set of size 3, and there's obviously only one, which is just the whole set itself. 
or you can think of it as like the number of way to, number of ways to choose three objects in no particular order from a set of three objects. And there's obviously just one way to do that, which is to take them all. Um, so it makes sense that this should be one, but let's just show it with the formula anyway. So um, just to remind you, here's the formula and choose R equals N factorial over R factorial and minus R factorial. Okay, so K minus R choose K minus R. So we do the top one up here and then we do the bottom one down here and then we do the top one minus the bottom one and that's um, pretty obviously going to be zero. Okay, so um, what you're going to see then is that we get cancellation right here and right here. So then we're going to have one over um, and then this other one is going to be zero factorial. Now I'm pretty sure I went over the concept of um, an empty product back when we did product notation. Um, so zero factorial is not actually zero, it is actually one. So that's an important thing to, to know. So zero factorial is one, not zero. Okay. Um, if you want to think of that in terms of like a counting problem, zero factorial is the number of ways of arranging zero objects um, in a particular order. So the number of ways to arrange zero objects is not zero because that would indicate that you can't do it, but you can do it. You just stand there and do nothing. That's how you do it. <laughs> So the number of ways to arrange zero objects in a particular order is one, which is to stand there and do nothing. Okay, so anyway, that is one. All right, so here's a couple of homework problems for you. Uh, so the first one um, says use theorem 9.5.1. So let me just remind you again, that's just the formula. It's this one. And that's all you need to do these problems. So go ahead and give these a try, pause the video, and then check your answers in the back of the book. Okay, so now let's talk about Pascal's formula. So this is named after uh, Blaise Pascal, and he was a French um, guy who lived in the kind of the mid 1600s. So like around the same time as uh, Newton and Leibniz were doing their work on calculus. Uh, he was doing a lot of work on probability and quite a few other things as well. He also did physics and he was also a theologian. Um, he actually kind of like gave up math after he discovered theology, which is a little sad to me. I think you can do both. Um, but he actually died really early. But before he died um, at, I think, age 39, uh, he discovered lots of really cool uh, math and physics stuff. So anyway, this is a formula that he came up with. I should say Blaise Pascal is also uh, one of the things he's most famous for, aside from like Pascal's uh, triangle, which we're going to talk about in a minute, is uh, Pascal's wager. So Pascal's wager is this, um, it's kind of cynical if you ask me, but it's this idea that like you should believe in God for the following reasons. Um, either there, there's two cases, right, which are mutually exclusive. Either there is no God, and then in that case it won't matter if you believed in him, or there is a God, and in that case you'll go to hell if you don't. So, <laughs> so you have the best outcome if you just go ahead and believe in God. <laughs> Uh, anyway, that's Pascal's wager. Uh, you can maybe talk about that more in a philosophy class. Uh, this is a math class, so right, let's go back to some math. Anyway, here is Pascal's formula. So let n and r be positive integers, and suppose that r is less than or equal to n. Uh, so that's the conditions that we need to um, plug in numbers that make sense to this formula. Uh, then we have the following, n plus 1 choose r is equal to n choose r minus 1 plus um, n choose r. So I can just show you like a brief mathematical proof using the formulas of why this actually works. Um, so let's start with the right hand side <clears throat> and then I'll show you that I can make it equal to the left hand side. So the right hand side is n choose r minus one plus n choose r. So I'm gonna write this um, according to the formula for the choose thingy is the following. Uh, and then this is gonna be, so when I subtract r minus one, I get um, n minus r plus one. So I'm just going ahead and distributing the subtraction there. And then the other one is this. Sorry for all the traffic noises. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's one of you guys going by at high speed. Who knows? Uh, okay, so what I'm going to do now is a little bit strange, but I'm going to multiply um, on the top and the bottom of each of these fractions by a certain um, number, which is the following. So I'm going to do the first one r over r. And then I'm actually going to move the plus one to be like right there, which so is rearranging the addition there. And then the other one I'm going to multiply by um, uh, n plus one minus r over n plus one minus r. Sorry, this is a little bit boring. If you don't like it, you can just fast forward. <laughs> okay. 
And now, so now what I can do is I'm actually going to combine um, these two parts together and then also um, this part and this part together to make a longer factorial there. Because if you look at the first one, um, r times r minus 1 factorial, that's uh, actually r factorial. So this is going to be, um, I'll just move the r up in the numerator there. And then this one is going to be, um, oops, I don't need parentheses, uh, r factorial times n plus 1 minus r factorial. And then over here, what's going to happen in this one is the n plus 1 minus r times the n minus r factorial. I can also combine that uh, to make a bigger factorial. Okay, like this. Factorial. And then uh, so just so you guys understand, like this factorial up here, that only goes on the n, so that's that's not going on the other factor there at all. Um, okay, so this is going to be r factorial, and then this one will be n plus 1 minus r factorial. Okay, so you guys see I've gotten the same denominator on both of them. Um, so now I'm going to add the um, two fractions together. So this is going to be um, r times n factorial. Um, so what I'm going to do, actually, I think I'll just go ahead and combine um, the numerators. So I've got r plus n plus 1 minus r times n factorial on the top. So I took the n factorial out of both of them. And then on the bottom, I've got the same denominator, which is this. Um, OK, and so these r's here cancel out. And so the top actually becomes um, n plus 1 times n factorial. And then on the bottom, I've got r factorial and then um, n plus 1 minus r. Uh, factorial, which is actually the same as um, n plus 1 factorial over r factorial and then n plus 1 uh, minus r factorial. And then I'm running out of room here, but this is n plus 1 choose r. Okay, so that becomes the same as the left hand side. So that's how you can show this is true um, using formulas, but let's talk about another interesting reason um, why you can see that it's true. Okay, so another way to think about this is the following. So suppose that you have a set of n plus 1 objects, and I'm just going to give them names because that will give us the power to um, talk about how we're going to manipulate them. So I'm going to call my n plus 1 objects a1, a2, a3, dot, 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 up through an, and then um, a n plus 1. So that's right there. And you want to choose r of them. So that's exactly what the left hand side of the formula is, uh, or the equation is calculating. So there are two uh, ways or two cases of the ways you can choose r objects from this set of n plus 1 objects. So either the set of r objects that you choose will include the last object, a n plus 1, or it will not include that. And those are two mutually exclusive ways of doing this. So the first case right here is um, if we include a n plus 1 as one of our r objects, then we have to choose the other r minus 1 objects from the set a1, a2, up through a n, so not including the a n plus 1, because we already have that. And there are n choose r minus 1 ways to do that. Now on the other hand, um, if you do not include a n plus 1 as one of your r objects, then you have to choose all, all r objects from the set a1, a2, up through a n, and again, not including a n plus 1 there, because we already decided not to take it. And there are n choose r ways to do that. Now, since these two cases produce mutually exclusive outcomes, we can use the addition rule to find that we can just add them together, and that will be the number of ways to choose r objects from a set of n plus 1 objects. So you just add those together. Right, so that's um, like a nice little logic-based proof of why this formula also works. Okay, so now we get to Pascal's triangle, and I do expect you've probably seen this before in some class. Um, I know when I used to teach high school, it was a... Um, it was a required topic for pre-calculus, so you might have seen it before in that class or another class. So we can actually arrange the, op, uh, the values of n choose r into a triangle, and then on each row you have a different value of n. So the first row is n equals 0, the second row is n equals 1, third row is n equals 2, and so on. And then from the left to the right, uh, r, the bottom number, increases from 0 to n. So this is that version of the triangle right here, um, written with the choosing notation. And then this is the same triangle over here, but it's just showing the values uh, that you get for each of those little n choose r thingies. And so what's interesting about this is that uh, all the entries along the edges are 1. So if you look at, um, for example, like the first entry right here, 0 choose 0. So this is the number of ways to choose 0 objects from a set of 0 objects. And there is one way to do that, and that is to just stand there and do nothing. <laughs> and then the same thing for this whole left side is the number of ways to choose, for example, 
um, zero objects from a set of four objects, there's one way to do that. Just don't take any of them, just stand there. And then along the other side over here, they're also all ones. And so if you think about that, that should make sense too, because for example, if you want to choose four objects from a set of four objects, there's one way to do that. And let's just take all of them. So these are all going to be ones um, along the edges right here. Okay. And then, so that's how you start off your triangle. But then when you want to get the other entries of the triangle, uh, what you do is just add the two entries above each one. So like, for example, you add one and one to get two, uh, you add one and two to get three, you add one and two to get three here as well. You add three and three to get six. So that's how you can fill in the rest of the triangle. And then again, that's just because of that formula that we went over on the last couple slides. That's why this works. Okay, so let's do a couple of um, examples and homework problems. Uh, so I'm just gonna do part A of number 10 here and then part B and part C are all your homework. So use Pascal's triangle, uh, which is given, well, they give it in a table in the book, but I've pasted it on here to compute the values of six choose two, six choose three, six choose four, and six choose five. So where would these be in our triangle? So I've shown it um, up through five choose zero through five choose five. Uh, that's the same one on the left and the right, but just with the values actually plugged in. So where would six choose two be? So six choose two is gonna be right here. Okay, and it's gonna be the sum of these two entries right here. And then six choose three is gonna be here. So it's the sum of these ones. And then uh, six choose four is here. So that's the sum of those two. And then six choose five is gonna be here. Okay, so the entries that we're looking for are the ones that are right here. Um, so that is gonna be 15. And then this one is going to be 20. I'm just adding those two numbers together. And then this is gonna be 15 again. And then this one is going to be um, six. Okay, so this is 15, 20, 15, and then six. Okay, so with that in mind, uh, go ahead and do part B, which is going to the next row, and then um, part C. Actually, you should do part C first, right? Because that um, then you'll be able to do part B. <laughs> so go ahead and pause the video, try that, check your answers in the back of the book. Okay, so now let's talk about the binomial theorem. So there are tons of interesting patterns in Pascal's triangle, like even if you just look at the um, each like diagonal as a sequence, it makes an interesting formula. Or if you look at like the patterns of divisibility, like where are all the multiples of five or things like that, there are tons of interesting patterns. Uh, but one kind of unexpected connection, unless you already know about it, uh, is that the entries also mirror the coefficients in certain polynomials. So look here at this pattern that I've got for you of x plus one squared and then x plus one cubed and then x plus one to the fourth and look at the coefficients here. So this coefficient here is, is one, and then there's two, and then there's one, and then this is one, and then three, and then three, and then one again, and then one, and then four, six, four, and one. And look at this rows over here, one, two, one, one, three, three, one, one, four, six, four, one. And you see those are the same coefficients that are in the triangle, right? So it's uh, quite interesting. And uh, let's see what's going on here by looking at it a little more deeply. Okay, so on this ex this slide here, I've explained exactly why this actually happens. Uh, it's a lot of text, but let's go through it and try to understand why this happens. So to see why this is happening, consider what happens when you expand the following polynomial. So it's a plus b to the fourth, and then I've color coded it. So the first factor is red and then blue and then green and then um, orange. And then what happens when you expand this is that you get these uh, 16 terms that are down here and then the first letter in each term is either the A or the B from the first factor. Okay, so that's why they're red. So you get eight of them that have the A, so half of them have the A from the first factor, and then the other half of them have the B from the first factor. Okay, and then um, the second factor is the blue ones, so you have your second letter in each of these is either the blue A or the blue B. And what's interesting is you see exactly half of them also have this blue A. So these four have the blue A and then these four down here have the blue A. Uh, but it's like staggered, oops, that's a B. It's staggered. So it's staggered in exactly the same way actually as those truth tables that we were making uh, way back in the class where you would have the far left column would be, you know, T, 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 and then F, 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 F. And then the next column would be like, you know, four T's and four F's and then wait, Nope, I've mixed it up like two T's and two F's and two T's and two F's. So it kind of is staggered like that. Um, but anyway, the point of all of this is that each of these terms 
is made by taking either A or B from each of the four factors, and you take them in every possible um, combination that you could get them, or every permutation that you could get them, I guess. And then since there are two choices for each factor, if we use the multiplication rule for counting, that would be two times two times two times two uh, ways to combine the A's and the B's in those factors. So you get two to the fourth, which is 16 terms. But now when you go to simplify this, some of these terms are actually the same, right? Like we have A, 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 B, A, A, B, B, A, A, B, A, A, and then B, A, A, A. All of those are equal to A cubed B. So when you're writing out um, the simplification of A plus B to the fourth, you don't of course wanna write out all 16 terms. You just wanna know how many of each possible different term there are. So you'd like to know, for example, how many terms are A cubed B. So you think of this as being just like those coin flipping problems where you're thinking about if I flip four coins, um, how many ways are there to get three heads and a tail, for example. So all you have to do is figure out how many ways there are to arrange one copy of B with three copies of A. So the way you want to think of doing this is you have four positions and you're going to choose one of those four positions to be B and then the rest of them will be A. And so the number of ways to choose one position out of four is four choose one. So there are going to be a cubed, uh, four choose one a cubed b terms. And then you can do it the same way for all of them, right? Like if you wanna know how many terms are gonna be a squared b squared, uh, you don't wanna to have to write them all out. You just wanna think about how many ways are there to arrange two copies of b with two copies of a. And so out of four positions, we choose two of those four positions to be b, and then the rest of them will be a. And it doesn't matter what order we choose the four, the two positions in because we're just going to fill them with B's. So it'll look the same regardless if we pick the second position and then the third position or if we pick the third position and then the second position to be B. So we just choose two of the four positions to be B and that's why there are four choose two terms that are equal to A squared B squared. So you can apply the same thought process to every single term in the polynomial and then you get the following um, expansion. So the number of terms that are equal to a to the fourth is four choose zero because you choose zero of the positions to be b. And then there, if you choose one of the positions to be b, that gives you the a cubed b terms. If you choose two of the positions to be b, that gives you the a squared b squared terms. Choose three of the positions to be b, that's the a b cubed terms. And then if you choose all four positions to be b, that is the b to the fourth terms. Okay. So this takes us to the binomial formula that is actually an application of it there at the bottom. So let's look at the whole formula. Okay, so this is the binomial theorem. Given any real numbers a and b and any non-negative integer n, so n could be 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. Then we have the following formula. a plus b to the n is equal to the sum from k equals 0 to n of n choose k times a to the n minus k b to the k. So if you look at what's going on here, um, you do need to start from zero and go up to n because you need to have all of the terms starting uh, with the one where there are no b's all the way up to where all of them are b's. And then you do also need to have the, the sum of your a um, factors and the sum of your b factors. You need to have that add up to n because each of the terms is going to have n a's or b's in it. Okay, just like we saw on the last page, all of the terms were length four because our power over here um, was 4. So this needs to add up to n right there. Okay, and then um, for this part right here, we're choosing k of the positions in each term to be b, and that's why the power on b is is k. That matches right there. And then n minus k on the a is just to make it add up to n. Okay, so I hope this formula um, makes sense to you. If it doesn't, uh, don't worry about it too much, but that is the formula. And then if you expand it, um, and just write it out with the ellipses, you get this right here. So this would actually be um, n choose zero right here, but n choose zero is just one because that's the one where you stand there and don't choose anything. And then also over here, you could put um, n choose n right here, but that will also be uh, one because that's the one where you just take all of the elements. There's only one way to do that. Okay, and then also, of course, you know, you could put like b, b to the zero right there is what you would actually get if you were using this formula up here, um, but b choose or sorry, b to the zero is one. And then same deal here, it's like this is a to the zero, but that's just one. All right, so that is both forms of the formula. And then I'll just note here a little vocabulary word is that n choose r is actually called a binomial coefficient because it is one of the coefficients of the binomial expression a plus b to the n. And what they mean by binomial is this, they're referring to this part right here. 
So, you know, a polynomial, that means a bunch of terms, poly, many, and then nomial means terms. So this is binomial because it's two terms. Okay, so let's go ahead and do some problems where we use this formula. So on this slide, I will do uh, number 20, and then I'll do 22 and 24 on some other slides. So number 20, we're going to expand p plus q to the 6. So obviously, if you wanted to expand p plus q to the 6th, you could just write it out six times and then just start foiling, but that would be horrendous and nobody wants to do that. So we're going to use this formula instead that will make it easier. Okay, so all we've done is we've substituted p for a and b for, or sorry, q for b. So this is going to be the sum from k equals 0 to 6 of 6 choose k, and then 6 is going in for n, obviously, and then this is going to be p, so this is going to be 6 minus k, and then this is going to be q to the k. Okay, so now we just have to actually do this formula, or do the summation. So starting with k equals 0, this is going to be 6 choose 0 times p to the 6 minus 0, q to the 0, and then we just go all the way up through 6. Okay, so I'm just going to keep going, minus 1, q to the 1, 6 choose 2, p to the 6 minus 2, q to the 2. I've got to go to a new line here. So this is 6 choose 3, p to the 6 minus 3, q to the 3, 6 choose 4, p to the 6 minus 4, q to the 4, 6 choose 5, p to the 6 minus 5, q to the 5, and then the last one, 6 choose 6, uh, p to the 6 minus 6, q to the um, 6. Okay, so now what I have to do is just simplify this. Um, and so I'm going to use uh, Wolfram Alpha and look up what the little choose parts are, 6 choose 2, 6 choose 3, all those ones, and I'll write down the simplification. So actually I lied, I'm not using Wolfram Alpha, I'm looking at Pascal's triangle, the row that starts with the 1, 6. Okay, so this is going to be p to the 6, and then q to the 0 is just uh, 1. So then the next one is 6, p to the 5, q, and then after 6 is 15. So this is p to the 4, q to the uh, 2. And then after 15 is 20, so this is 20, p to the 3, q to the 3, and then it goes in reverse order again, so 15 comes again, q to the 4, and then 6 again, and then 1, and then p to the 6 minus 6 is just um, 1. Okay, so this is my final answer here. Okay, so let's do one that's a little bit um, more interesting. So here I'm going to plug in, um, so I'm plugging in uh, 5 for n, and then I'm plugging in u for um, a, and then for b I'm actually plugging in negative v, not just v, negative v, okay, because this is like a little plus minus thing here. Okay, so then I'm going to get uh, sum from k equals 0 to 5 of um, 5 choose k, and then u to the um, n minus k, and then negative v to the k. Okay, so let's write out what this is. So starting with k equals 0, u to the n minus 0, negative v to the um, 0, and then just keep going like this. Oops. You guys can fast forward if this is boring. And now I'm going to look at Pascal's triangle to fill these in. And keep in mind, you're also raising that negative also to the um, powers, so you got to keep think about what the negative does as well. Okay, so this is going to be u to the n, and then the negative v to the 0 is going to be 1. 
and then the next 5 choose one that is 5, um, but actually this is going to be negative 5 because we get a negative from the negative v to the 1 part. Okay, so this is n minus 1 times, oops, I shouldn't have written n on all these, I should have written 5, I just noticed, sorry. So this should be 5, 5, 5, 5, and 5, so this one should also be 5, sorry. My mistake. Okay, so this is not going to be n minus 0, it's going to be um, 5 minus 1, which is 4. Okay, and then we'll have v there. Okay, and then the next one we're doing negative v squared, so that's going to go back to being positive. So this will be 10 u to the third v squared. And then um, the next one we have negative v to the third, so that'll be negative again. So this will be 5 choose 3 is 10 again, and then u squared v cubed. And then the next one will be positive 5 uv to the fourth, and then the last one will be um, negative v to the fifth. Okay. Alright, so I think I'm going to skip over 24 because I hope you got the idea now. Uh, well, let me just go ahead and do it just in case. Alright, so now let's do uh, 24. So this one. Okay, so it's only to the fourth, so not so bad. So this is going to be the sum from k equals 0 to 4. And then um, notice in here that this is going to be a is going to be u squared, and then b is going to be negative 3v. So it's a little bit complicated actually. Uh, so it's probably good we're doing this one. Okay, so this is going to be 4 choose k, um, and then we're going to have u squared to the n minus k. Oops, I'm doing the n's again. This should be 4 minus k, because n is 4. n is 4. Okay, and then negative 3v to the k. Alright, so let's write out these terms. So this is going to be 4... Oops, my pen stopped working. Okay, so this is 4 choose 0, and then u squared to the 4 minus 0, negative 3v to the 0, plus 4 choose 1, u squared to the 4 minus 1, negative 3v to the 1, and then k equals 2, so like this, and then the last two, 4 choose 3, u squared to the 4 minus 3, negative 3v to the 3, and then finally 4 choose 4, u squared to the 4 minus 4, and then negative 3v to the 4. Okay, so now let's simplify these. So this is going to be a little trickier, so I think I'm going to do it on two lines. Um, so, okay, so this is going to be um, 4 to 0 is 1, and then this is going to be u squared to the 4, and then negative 3v to the 0, so that'll actually just be um, 1 there. And then I'm going to have 4 choose 1, that's 4, and then I'm going to have u squared to the 3, and then I'm going to have times negative 3v to the 1, so just no exponent. And then 4 choose 2 is um, 6, and then I'm going to have u squared to the 2, and then I'm going to have negative 3v um, squared, and then I'm going to have 4 choose 3 is 4, and then u squared to the 1, so actually nothing. And then this will be negative 3v cubed. And then finally, 4 choose 4 is 1. And then u squared to the 0 is, is 1 again as well. So this will just be negative 3v to the fourth. OK, so now let me simplify a little bit more. So u squared to the fourth is u to the eighth. And then negative 4 times, or sorry, 4 times negative 3 is um, negative 12. And then u squared cubed is u to the sixth. And then we have 1v. Okay, and then the next one, the negative 3 squared part, that's going to make 9, and then 9 times 6 is uh, 54, so this will be 54, and then that'll be u to the 4th, and then we have two v's, so u, v squared, and then, okay, the next one, um, negative 3 cubed is going to be negative 27, and if we multiply that by 4, um, I believe that's negative 108, uh, so that'll be negative 108, and then u squared, and then v to the 3rd. Okay, and then the last one, uh, negative 3 to the 4th, that is 81. So this will be 81v to the 4th. 
Okay, so you see we ended up with different exponents because of the fact that our b was uh, had an extra factor of uh, 3 in it. And then we also have the alternating coefficients because of the negative uh, 3v part. Okay, so here are your homework problems for you to try. And uh, go ahead and give these a try. Look up your answers in the back of the book. All right, so now let's just do two more examples. Um, I'm going to show you how to work backwards uh, using this binomial formula or binomial theorem formula. So I'm going to do number 44 on this slide and then these others on another slide. Okay, so let me look at what I've got here. So I've got i equals zero. So first of all, I have a different um, letter in here, but that's not a big deal. And then I have m instead of n, and then I have m choose i, and then 4 to the i. Okay, so um, looking at this, the only difference here is that um, we're using uh, i instead of k. But that's not a big deal at all. That's just a dummy variable. Uh, so it doesn't, really doesn't matter what you call it. You'll get the same summation. And also this, I have i instead of k um, there as well. So that looks like 4 is actually the b part. And then I'm also using m instead of um, n. Uh, right there. And then it looks like uh, b is 4. Looks like b is 4 um, because that's the part that's being raised to the part that would normally be k. And then if I want to I can actually put a 1 in here for the other thing because 1 won't affect the value at all. So I can make this 1 to the m minus k there. Um, so I'm adding this Um, factor won't change the value. Change the value. Uh, so we're letting a equal 1 here. Okay, and then so what all this means is now I know what a, b, and m, and n are. So a is uh, 1, b is 4, and then uh, n is m. So this is uh, a plus b to the n, which is some going from the right hand side of the equation to the left hand side of the equation. So this is going to be uh, 1 plus 4 to the m, or in other words 5 to the m. Um, so that is that. So hopefully you got the idea there. Let's do another one if you didn't quite get it. Okay, so let's look at number 46 here, and uh, these are going to be on another slide. So 46, let's look at what we have. So we have a summation, and we're using k this time, so that's good. That's what I'm used to. We're using m again instead of n, but that's okay. That's just going to be our exponent. And then what we've got over here looks a little more like my usual a and b stuff, um, because I have two things to exponents over here. And this is x to the k. So this is going to be the b part, and this is going to be the a part, and then this m is going to be my n part. Okay, so a equals 2, b equals x, and n is m. So this is a plus b to the n, and using my values for a, b, and n, this is 2 plus x to the m, which I can't simplify any further. So go ahead and try 43 and 45 and check the answers for those in the back of the book. All right, everybody, that was it. Uh, just this one section, so I'll see you next time.